Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the derivative of this function that you see here. Okay. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to recall a couple properties um, from algebra. And those are the ones that you see in this box here. Um, so we have the natural log of B to A, okay, to the power A. That is the same thing as bringing the A in front, and then we have natural log of B. Uh, the other one is that if you have the natural log of A over B, then you can rewrite that as the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. So in other words, the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. Okay? Um, so this is going to be quite useful uh, for what we're going to do here. Okay? Now we could, technically we could find the derivative without applying these uh, formulas. However, um, it would involve a lot more work, especially when it comes to simplifying the expression at the end. Um, and thus it's you know, prone to, to more error. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and proceed here. So first we're going to rewrite this. Okay? We're rewrite this as the natural log of x minus five divided by two x plus seven, all raised to the power of one half. And keeping in mind that, remember, if you have the square root of x, that is equal to x to the power of one half. Okay? And since that's what we have here, right? both of these are underneath the square root. All right, so now, uh, from here, what we can do is go ahead and use the first, the first um, identity here. Okay? And so this is going to be, let's see, I'll do that down here. So we can bring down the one half in front of the natural log, and that will leave us with the natural log of x minus five divided by two x plus seven. All right. And then from there, um, notice that we have natural log of this quotient here. So we can use this formula, okay? So this is the same thing as writing one half. And we need to put a bracket here. Um, eventually you'll see why in a minute. Um, so we have natural log of X minus five, okay, minus the natural log of two X plus seven. So again, just utilizing the second formula here, okay, we took the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. And the one half is getting multiplied by both of these, right? Okay. All right, so that's why we have to either put brackets there or parentheses. Okay? If you don't put the bracket or parentheses here, then you're not going to, uh, then you're not going to get one half times this one. Okay. So the one half is affecting all of this. Okay. All right, so now we, we have the equivalent expression, okay, of this one. So y is equal to this, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so we haven't applied the um, calculus part yet, okay? Um, so again, these are, you know, these are algebra rules. This is not, these are not um, um, related to calculus, okay? From here, so now we have this, we can go ahead and um, take the derivative now, okay? Um, so let's do that. Uh, recalling this um, differential rule. And if you have the derivative of natural log of u of x, where I use this is a function of x, and we're taking the derivative of this with respect to x, then this is going to be one over the argument of natural log of u. What I mean by argument, that is the input. Okay, that's the input for natural log. So whatever you see here in the um, in the argument of natural log, right? Okay, inside those parentheses, and then we're going to multiply that by uh, the derivative of u of x. So this is going to be u prime of x. And 
we can rewrite this as u prime of x over u of x. Okay. So that is the, um, the rule that we're going to apply for both of these now. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the derivative. Okay. So this, remember that this is just y. Okay. So take the derivative, the y prime, and okay. we're gonna take the derivative with respect to x. So we're gonna keep one half outside uh, because it's, we can do that with derivatives. Okay? We, can keep, uh, we can take out constants from the differential operator. Okay? So we we'll keep it out there, and then later we can, um, we can go ahead and distribute it if, if we need to. So we're going to have y prime is going to be equal to uh, one half times. I'll go ahead and just write the notation here and then take the derivative of the next step. All right, so we're gonna have the derivative of this, okay? Minus this one. And I'll go ahead and write it like this. Okay. And again, we need to make sure that we you know, multiply by the one half. Okay, so again, this is just to illustrate that we're gonna you know, we took, we're taking the derivative of this and using the properties of derivatives, we can, um, because there's a minus sign here, we can take the derivatives of each of these separately, okay? Um, if that was addition, you could, you could also do this, right? Okay. Uh, but however, if it's, remember that if it's a product or if you have division here, you can't, you can't distribute the differential operator that way, okay? All right. So the differential operator is sometimes referred to as a linear operator. Okay, and that's it's because it's linear. This is you know, how we can set it up. Okay, um, so now we're going to have one half. Okay, we're going to take the derivative of this one. This is going to be one over x minus five. So one over the argument times the derivative of x minus five. Minus. Okay. So here we're going to take the derivative of natural log of 2x plus 7. So that's going to be 1 over 2x plus 7 times the derivative of 2x plus 7. Okay. Okay, again, so we took the derivative of both of these. We have 1 over the argument times the derivative of the inside. Um, same thing here, 1 over the argument of natural log. 1 over 2x plus 7 times the derivative of this part. Okay. So again, that's just using this property. Okay. All right. So now uh, we can go ahead and simplify this. Okay. It's going to give us that y prime equals to 1 half times 1 over x minus 5. The derivative of x minus five obviously is, is one, right? And if you think about it um, conceptually, x minus five is a linear function, right? It has a constant slope of one. So, um, so that means the derivative has to be one. Okay. So the derivative of this is one. And then we have minus one over two x plus seven. times the derivative of 2x plus 7, which is going to be 2. And again, conceptually, 2x plus 7 is a linear function. Um, it has, and that, so this one it has a slope of 2, right? A constant slope of 2. Therefore, the derivative must be 2, okay? Okay, so now... So there's our, um, there's our derivative, uh, but we can go ahead and simplify a little bit more here, kind of clean it up a little bit. All right, so let's go back here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna have y prime equals to one half. Okay. Um, this is just gonna be one over x minus five minus two over two x plus seven. So basically, I just put the two in, in here in the numerator, right? That's the same. Okay, same thing algebraically. 
Okay, so um, let's go ahead and um, go ahead and simplify this a little more. Um, we have a, uh, what we can do here is we can um, go ahead and subtract these, but uh, we need to make sure that the denominators are the same here so that we can put, we can combine these and put them over a common denominator. All right, so let's do that. All right, so we're gonna have y prime equals to one half. And because my, the common denominator here, right, it's gonna be x minus five times two x plus seven. So that means I need to multiply this term by two x plus seven, okay? <clears throat> and so I'll, I will illustrate that with another color here. Okay, and then we're gonna have minus two times X minus five. All right. Okay, so again, we're trying to, we need to subtract these. Um, these are what's called rational functions, right? rational expressions. Okay, so we need to um, subtract them. So the way we do that is to, or the way we can combine those is to come up with a common denominator. So this one, um, so our common denominator is gonna be X minus five times two X plus seven. Um, so we need to multiply this one by two X plus seven right on the bottom. So if we do that on the bottom, then I have to multiply the same expression on top. Same thing here. This one we need to multiply by x minus five, but if we multiply there, um, if we multiply x minus five here, we need to multiply x minus five on top, okay? So now we have the same denominator, so we, we can um, combine these now. So we're gonna have two x plus seven, okay? And another thing, to be careful of here, make sure that you do put the parentheses around this because if you don't, you know, um, you're not going to, you're only going to multiply the two with the x here. Um, if you don't have, or you may forget to do that if you don't have a parentheses. Okay. So it's always a good habit to make sure that you put parentheses around, you know, uh, around that part. So we're going to have minus 2x and then plus 10 because of this negative up here. Okay. And then this is all divided by x minus five times two x plus seven. All right. So obviously here uh, we get two x, um, well, we're gonna get, here we have two x minus two x, which is gonna give us zero. And then we have um, 10 and seven, that's gonna give us 17. And then this is all divided by x minus five, times 2x plus seven. Okay, um, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and um, multiply uh, this one half into here. So this is going to give us 17 over two times x minus five times 2x plus seven. So I'll go ahead and multiply this out. So this is going to give us, um, we have x times two x, which is two x squared. And then we have plus seven x minus 10 x. And then uh, minus five times seven is gonna give us minus 35. All right, and then we can go ahead and distribute the two. So that's gonna give us four x squared. And then we can, this is seven X minus 10 X, that is minus three X. So that's gonna give us a minus six X here. And then 35 times two is gonna give us 
um, we're going to get uh, 90. Okay. Uh, sorry, not 90. We're going to get uh, 70. And that's going to be a negative 70. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's probably it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So again, combining these two, 7x minus 10x, that's going to give us minus 3x here. Uh, minus 3x times 2 is going to give us a minus 6x. And then here we have 35. 35 times two is going to give us 70, but we have a negative here. Okay, so that is our um, derivative for this function. Okay, so that's the result that we need. Okay, so again, um, the, the main point here is that you can easily, um, you can simplify this process by. Um, you know, by utilizing these two formulas, by rewriting the natural log into a simpler form and then taking the derivative. Um, and that's what we did here, right? Remember that we took, by rewriting this into here, and then we took down the one half, we have one half times natural log of this, and then we could separate these two. So natural log of x minus five minus the natural log of two x plus seven. And then therefore we can take the um, derivative of both of these. And so that's what we did here. Uh, keep in mind this rule for the um, derivative of the natural log of u of x, okay? Um, and then, um, and then using algebra to simplify our result, okay? All right, so I'll stop here and uh, see some of you next time.